There's a quote that gets thrown around a lot in politics now that you're entitled to your own opinion, but you're not entitled to your own facts. And what my research really shows is how people turn opinions into facts. I'm a social psychologist who's interested really in human reasoning and some of the biases in human reasoning. So uh, the phenomenon I've been interested in in my research has been motivated, what we call motivated reasoning. It's the idea that uh, people think they think like scientists, but they really think more like attorneys. Uh, so scientists build facts up from the bottom and come to a conclusion. Attorneys have a conclusion that they want to reach and they find the facts that support that. And that's really much more the way people think. These biases that I'm interested in are very subtle. They're what psychologists call implicit biases. So people don't really recognize that they're happening. And consequently, they uh, change the way you, uh, what you believe to be true without you really knowing it. I think I got really interested in the political aspect because of my belief that this motivated reasoning phenomenon really underlies a lot of the political conflict and polarization that we're seeing. And we have two sides who have strong ideological beliefs and those bias, those beliefs bias the way they process information. So that the two sides end up with these different sets of facts. And as I you know, often say that this culture war that we talk about a lot is really uh, as much a fact war as it is a culture war. My students and I have recently been involved in what's called a meta-analysis where you statistically combine the results of lots of different studies and we try to find every study we could that had that looked at political bias. And the question we wanted to look at was whether liberals uh, were more biased than conservatives or the opposite. Uh, and what we found is that both groups were biased uh, and they were biased to almost the identical degree. For the last eight or nine years, I've been collaborating with a group of psychologists around the country uh, on a website called yourmorals.org where we collect data and have amassed a data set of about 700,000 people that allows us to look at the predictors of people's political attitudes and beliefs. Another thing that's important to note is that my research is really collaborative. It's a group enterprise. Uh, in my hot cognition lab, I have many graduate students and many undergraduates who are conducting research uh, on all different aspects of moral and political reasoning. What I hope my research gets at is this sort of bottleneck that happens. So lots of people in the School of Social Ecology study uh, policy and how they, they want science to inform policy. Uh, none of that's going to happen if the two sides in the political debate can't get along. So by studying that political uh, conflict process, if we can unlock that, then that allows uh, some, some more informed policy to occur.